Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. A friend of mine lost her cat a few months ago. She led it outside as usual when a dog attacked it. My friend ran off the stray dog, but her cat had run deep into the woods and was nowhere to be found. She called and called, but no reply. Being a single woman, that cat was her baby. She worried and fretted all night. When she saw no sign of it in the morning, she sat out on her bicycle, scouring the neighborhood, calling for it, asking neighbors, but to no avail. That night, a storm swept through. In the morning, still no cat. But later, the sad-looking, bedraggled kitty finally made its way home, matted and scarred from the dog bite, but otherwise okay. My friend was overjoyed. Her lost cat was home again. She bathed it, took pictures of the wound, and consulted her vet. Never was a cat more pampered than that day. Why did my friend do all this? She loved her kitty. It was important to her. I imagine the prodigal son looked much like my friend's cat as he trudged down the driveway to his father's estate. He didn't know what kind of reception he would get, but he was willing to risk it. As he walked, he rehearsed his speech. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Perhaps he was so intent on memorizing his speech that he didn't see his father until he was engulfed in a big bear hug. He started the speech, but his father cut him off, ordering a servant to bring the best robe, a ring for his finger, shoes for his feet, to kill the fatted calf and throw a party. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, the father exclaimed. He didn't care that his son smelled like a pig pen. He was just glad his beloved son had come home. What a beautiful but God! We know the father in the story symbolizes our father God, welcoming his lost children home, no matter why or where they'd strayed, no matter how dirty with sin or how unworthy they felt. Can you imagine the grins that spread across the faces of the tax collectors and other sinners in the crowd who were listening to Jesus tell this story that day? Jesus aimed the parable at the scribes and Pharisees who had complained about him hanging out with the riffraff, claiming that God loves them equally to those who had not strayed from his narrow path. But Jesus wanted those in the crowd who had strayed to know that they are welcomed back with open arms. Everyone can identify with someone in this story. Are you the sinful son, humbly returning home, hoping God will accept you? then there's good news. He will, because he loves you. Are you the older son who hasn't strayed? Then you can see the love and forgiveness modeled for you by the father in this story. And you can choose to reach out to your brothers and sisters in love and forgiveness as well. Or maybe you identify with the father. You've been deeply hurt by someone you love and trust, and you're waiting for them to come with an apology or at least regret. You can do what the Father did in this story. Meet them halfway. Extend love and forgiveness, no matter how undeserving that person is. Love like God, unconditionally. You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes on our website, which you can find in the description below. Thank you for listening, and remember... Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.